the question was, some have argued that mass expulsions uh, hurt the service, and some have argued that mass expulsions do not hurt the service because it takes us forever to figure out who they are, and therefore it makes it easier to operate. But every year I fail. This is a very important point. The Treasury Department is right in front of you, and it was so deeply penetrated, you may or may not have heard of Harry Dexter White. By show of hands, how many of you have ever heard of his name? Excellent. That's more than the average. It is in their own backyard. I mean, so many tours of Washington are symbols of other things. Uh, what we show you are symbols of real things that took place at those locations, and that this is spy capital of the world. Bob Hansen would have been caught up in that policy. The FBI starting in the 1990s, that's how deeply Treasury Department was penetrated. Oh, when uh, David uh, is telling the stories about the heavy penetration of the KGB during and shortly after the Second World War, I'd like to make a point. It happened not because the Soviet intelligence was super sophisticated at that time, but because there was no security in this country. He passes to him at this restaurant the names of 20 people who were working for Western intelligence, 10 of which were subsequently executed. And that act took place right here. And, and when we go by Chadwick's, I want you to feel the ghost of the activity that took place there. I would all, if you would make a right hand turn, look to your left, it's just before the park sign. On the right hand side, you can go in there, you'll find a plaque that talks about where Vitaly Yurchenko was sitting when he finally redefected back to the Soviet Union. Quick, quick story. He then gets up and goes to the men's room. Instead of coming back to the area, he goes out the side door, and the security officer sits and waits and saying, I wonder what happened. He finally goes to try to find him. He can't find Vitaly Yurchenko, the colonel in the KGB. And you'll see it. it's the one that's gated right here. You can look at it, two, two entrances looking through there. That was that house right there. If Washington is the spy capital of the world, our street is the street of spies because of a number of things that take place on our street. How many of you know about it being a clandestine meeting site? Who was the agent? How, absolutely. Pollard. This is one of the meeting sites for Pollard. And if you haven't been there, I really encourage you to go there. Uh, Elvis? That was a signal for Rick Ames to advise his SVR handler that he was prepared to fill a dead drop. So he would drive from his home at about 6 o'clock in the morning, 6.30. He'd put a chalk mark down there and then go back home. Stores, along with Ron Pelton, who did it in 1979. We'll talk about him. In the Navy, we have John Walker, who walks in through this door also. And we always wonder, well, all the time, well, uh, everything they were doing, most of the time they were doing, they were just sitting here, smoking cigarettes, taking coffee, reading Washington Post, and waiting until somebody walks in and says, I'm yours, just buy me. <laughs> and our goal is to really educate people about the reality of espionage, that it's not the glamour of James Bond, it's the tragedy of the Hansen case and the people who die as a result of this activity.